Coming up on today's show, Tesla pushes sentry mode, dog mode, and some Easter eggs to all Tesla cars, Amazon leads a $700 million investment round in Rivian, and the second generation Kia Soul EV gets its official US range ratings. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of the Transport Evolved News Roundup Show, or TEN as we like to call it around these parts. Believe it or not, we're now at episode number 240, and we'd never have gotten this far without all of your support. So thank you. Audi's all-electric e-tron SUV has yet to begin deliveries around the world, but it's already filling up the order books. Audi said this week that it's now received more than 20,000 reservations for its long-range fast charging plug-in. Deliveries were supposed to start at the end of last year, but a delay occurred when a software update required extra certification before official launch. Now Audi says customer deliveries are expected to start in Europe next month, with other markets following later this year. Nikola Motors has spent the last few years filling up its order books for its range of hydrogen fuel cell plug-in hybrid big rigs, duking it out with the Tesla Semi for supremacy and the zero emission marketplace. This week, it announced that it will make battery electric versions of its Nikola 1, Nikola 2 and Nikola Tray to sell alongside its fuel cell ones. According to Nikola Motors, improvements in battery technology now means battery electric trucks make more sense for short haul and city work. For long distance cross-country heavy haulage, Nikola maintains that hydrogen fuel cell trucks remain the best option. Tesla pushed a series of software updates to customer cars this week, adding new features and a few extra Easter eggs too. New features now include 360 degree dash cam recording capability, blind spot warning chime and geolocated auto folding mirror functionality. Tesla also introduced sentry mode designed to improve vehicle security and deter thieves and dog mode, which is designed to help keep dogs cool in a parked Tesla while displaying an easy to read message that shows passers-by your dogs are okay. That said, you really shouldn't leave your dogs or kids alone in your car for extended periods of time. A couple of weeks ago, the word from Volkswagen and Ford was that the two companies would soon be collaborating on electric vehicles. But according to Ford's president of global markets, the two companies have such completely different strategies that are now completely incompatible. Essentially, while Ford is focused on commercial vehicles and high-performance electric cars, Volkswagen wants to focus on low-cost cars that everyone can afford. And that means that while both companies now seem to want electrification, they can't yet seem to see how their different goals can fit together. As the most popular electric car in France and the second most popular electric car in Europe, the Renault Zoe has quite a strong following, even with its current range-topping 40 kilowatt hour battery pack and real-world range of 140 miles. This week, we heard more about this car's successor, the second-generation Zoe, which is due to go on sale this year. Reports cite a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack and 250 miles of real world range. 22 kilowatt AC and 100 kilowatt CCS quick charging will also be standard. Tesla might have only just begun deliveries of its Model 3 electric car in Europe and China, but it already seems the company is unhappy with the delivery firm it chose for some of European logistics. According to several reports, Tesla has ended its delivery contract with ICO, a Belgian-based handling company, after just one week of deliveries and is now looking for a suitable replacement. Customer delays with Model 3 deliveries thought to be impacted by a strike by ICO workers at the Zeebrugge port seems to have prompted the decision. Now, ICO will only offload cars at the port, leaving deliveries to another company. Rivian made quite a big splash when it broke stealth mode last year and debuted its high-performance R1T electric pickup and R1S electric SUVs at the LA Auto Show. It already has a factory to produce both its vehicles in normal Illinois and has pretty big order books for the R1T, 
which will enter production next year. Now it has more money too, after confirming at the end of this week that Amazon led a $700 million investment round that will help it bring the R1T to market. Earlier in the week, GM was also rumored to be investing in the company, although at the time of filming, this hasn't been confirmed. Mercedes-Benz is reporting high demand for its first electric SUV, the 2020 EQC, so much so that the company has completely sold out of its 2020 model year EQCs and is well on the way to selling out its 2021 model years too. However, it is worth noting that Mercedes-Benz didn't have a particularly high production target for this year, the 2020 model year version, and hasn't committed to a particularly large overall production volume. Simply put, if you don't plan on a huge production volume, it's a lot easier to sell out than if you plan a high volume. And now it's time for short shorts. A new study released this week has shown that two thirds of customers would now consider spending more on a car if it was alternative fueled, with 70% of those below 50 saying they'd pay more to buy an electric car over an internal combustion engine version. Audi has released teaser pictures of the next electric model it plans to bring to market after the e-tron and e-tron GT the Audi Q4 e-tron. Right now, the Q4 e-tron is still in concept form, but Audi plans to showcase it to the world next month at the Geneva Motor Show. French President Emmanuel Macron has announced a 700 million euro investment into domestic battery cell production for electric vehicles. Similar announcements have been made by other countries and suggest that Europe as a whole is keen to make its own lithium ion battery packs. Fiat Chrysler was the only automaker in the US in 2016 to fail to meet corporate average fuel economy targets and as such will now be facing a $77 million fine instead. FCA says it's committed to improving the fuel efficiency of its fleet, uh, but at the same time railed against the cafe targets anyway. In addition to rumours flying around about GM considering an investment in Rivian, a second rumour this week suggested that General Motors was looking to work with Tesla to design and build a pickup truck. This rumour has been flatly denied by both sides and seems less credible than the Rivian one. Amazon continued its push into the autonomous vehicle world late last week by taking part in a half billion dollar round of funding for Aurora Tech, a Silicon Valley startup focused on autonomous car technology. Aurora is currently valued at more than two billion US dollars. GM has opened the order books for its latest electric vehicle. It's a pedelec electric bicycle. It's calling the GM Ariv and can be yours from a cool 2,800 euro and features a range of up to 64 kilometers per charge and an electronically assisted top speed of 25 kilometers per hour. Wireless charging specialists Wetricity announced the official acquisition of Qualcomm Halo from Qualcomm Technologies this week. While Qualcomm is mainly known for its smartphone chipsets, Qualcomm Halo focus on wireless inductive charging for electric cars. The value of the deal is unknown. An engineering company from Swindon, England has opened the order books for its Swind E Classic Mini, a fully electric, fully restored electric mini. Only 100 examples will be made and sold at an eye-watering £79,000 sterling each. Honda has released a teaser pic of the prototype electric car it intends to unveil at the Geneva Motor Show next month. While Honda itself is calling this a prototype, sources close to the company refer to it as near production, suggesting Honda is close to releasing that new production electric vehicle. Following a spate of anti-Tesla attacks in the US in which superchargers were blocked by large pickup trucks, Tesla is quietly testing tech to stop non-Teslas from parking in supercharger bays. Videos from Taiwan this week show at least one potential solution being tested out at Tesla superchargers. Washington State Legislature has considered two bills to further EV adoption and support this week. One would follow California's ZEV state mandate, requiring the same for automakers selling in the Evergreen state. The other would mandate state fleets by only electric vehicles by 2023. 
Lightning Motorcycles opened the order books for its Lightning Strike bike this week, teasing some new information on the bike's design and riding position. The Strike will get its unofficial unveiling next month and promises impressive performance and range for under 13 grand. Not to be outdone, Zero Motorcycles also released a new video teasing more info on its new electric motorbike, which is due to debut at the end of this month. From the video, we can say it will feature a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery pack and improved, more efficient electric motor. Scientists at Purdue University have been working on flow battery tech for several years, but have just released details of a successful prototype battery that can be refilled super quickly, uses non-toxic materials, and could offer a far higher energy density than conventional batteries. And those are your short shorts. There will be more, as usual, next week. Following its official unveiling last year at the LA Auto Show, Kia has just confirmed an official range rating of 243 miles for its next generation 2019 Kia Soul EV. An evolutionary step up from its predecessor in terms of styling, the new Kia Soul EV gets the same 64 kilowatt hour battery pack and motor as its big brother, the Kia e Nero. But thanks to its smaller size and lighter weight, actually travels further on a charge. Pricing is expected to be announced soon, with the car going on sale in limited compliance market states by the summer. Tesla and Daimler once worked together on electric cars, thanks in part to Daimler's shareholding in Tesla and Tesla's smart move to earn a bit of cash engineering the electric drivetrain for the Mercedes-Benz B-Class ED. Then there was a messy breakup and no love lost, but this week Tesla CEO Elon Musk complimented the new Sprinter electric panel van on Twitter and something rather magical happened. The two companies have now apparently begun talking on what a Tesla Daimler electric Sprinter could be like, even though Daimler is bringing its own version of an electric Sprinter to market this year. Of course, we also know that Tesla uses the Sprinter for its mobile service fleet, so maybe. We humans are a pain in the butt for autonomous vehicles, or rather for the software that autonomous vehicles use to predict what we're going to do next. So far, autonomous cars have got the hang of predicting the movement of other vehicles and of cyclists. But pedestrians are a completely different matter, which is why it's great news that researchers at the University of Michigan, working with Ford, have showcased a biomechanically inspired recurrent neural network that can more accurately predict what a human is about to do. This makes autonomous cars safer and the roads of the future safer as well. And Finally, Toyota has a bit of a big problem with electric vehicles. It's pretty well known in the automotive world. If it's not complaining that the battery technology isn't ready for prime time, it's spreading worry about charging infrastructure or the time it takes to refuel your vehicle. And now a new series of ads in the UK take it to the next level. The ads are for the new Corolla Hybrid and they portray electric vehicles as being slow and boring and focus instead on Toyota's favourite new slogan, self-charging hybrid, a term which not only confuses customers but also seems to imply that Toyota has broken the laws of physics. Oh dearie dearie me Toyota, it's not EVs that are currently looking stupid. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. Don't forget to like, comment and share and bash the notification bell so you know when a new episode is airing. If you want to support our network, you'll also find links below to Patreon, Ko-fi and our shop where you can buy yourself some Transport Evolved merch. And if you want to chat about the show, then there is also a Discord server. You'll find the link below. I'll be back next week with more news, reviews and insight for you all to enjoy. But until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter to one another. Keep evolving!